Hi, this is David Harper of Bonnock Turtle with a review of unexpected loss for a credit or loan asset for FRM candidates. This is from Michael Ong. And before I show you the calculation for unexpected loss, I wanted to put it into perspective because we see different definitions of unexpected loss and they have more in common than might seem at first glance. So here I have a hypothetical distribution, a loss distribution that might describe a credit or loan asset. And you can see typically it's non-normal. It's asymmetrical. It has positive skew. That's because for a credit asset, we typically have limited upside, but the prospect of significant downside losses. And here at the average or expected value, is what we call the expected loss. We have some expectation of loss or default on the loan asset. Typically we cover that with a loan loss provision. Now the unexpected loss attempts to quantify our uncertainty in regard to losses above and beyond the expected loss. And we have at least two sources of unexpected loss. One, unexpected default on the credit asset to unexpected credit migration. So a downgrade or credit migration in a down direction would decrease the value of the loan asset. And so the unexpected loss, as we're looking at it in here, as defined by Michael Long, is denoted with a sigma, and that means the standard deviation. So the unexpected loss is a measure of dispersion, and specifically, it is the estimated volatility of potential loss in value around the expected loss. So it's a one standard deviation dispersion. Now we could lose more than that, of course. And so if we move to the right, we're going to end up at some multiple of the standard deviation. So that's what I mean here by alpha times standard deviation. And we're going to get into the value at risk or VAR based confidence. So here at one standard deviation, that must associate with a low level of confidence. As we increase the confidence, we move to the right in the distribution and we get to some multiple of standard deviations. And then we get to economic and regulatory capital. So here at a single standard deviation, that's a measure of the volatility and it helps us to quantify the uncertainty. But we wouldn't, it's not enough for us to cover these unexpected losses with a capital cushion. It's not enough for either economic or regulatory capital purposes. So here, if we consider just my schematic, unexpected loss generically is a VAR based concept, meaning it's the worst expected loss with some degree of confidence minus the expected loss. And we have at least three subclasses of this definition, all of which fit under this. First, the one we're looking at here in Michael Long, which is the volatility. It's the one standard deviation and it must correspond to a low level of confidence. We, you, we could use it to get our, to, to quantify the uh, unexpected loss, we might use it for a shareholder perspective, but it's going to be insufficient for a capital cushion. So we move to multiples of one standard deviation, higher levels of confidence, and we have economic capital, which is the internal measure, and it's going to be some multiple, that's C, this constant, of the unexpected loss is defined by one standard deviation and we're going to be into higher confidence and regulatory capital from a measurement standpoint is similar except that it's externally mandated in this case by the Basel II framework where specifically the unexpected loss is a function of 99.9 percent .9 confidence but in all cases it's a worst expected loss given some level of confidence. So now, if we consider the example in Michael Ong, here's the formula for unexpected loss. And I'll remind you, what we're doing is calculating a, the volatility of the potential loss in asset value. And so it's a one standard deviation calculation here. 
we need several inputs. I'm using Mike Long's example, so the adjusted exposure is 8.25 million. We need a probability of default or expected default frequency, I'll assume 0.15%. We need a loss given default, I'll assume 50%, and you'll note that that's 1 minus the loss given default is equal to the recovery rate. So 50% loss given default is the same as 50% recovery rate. I also need, in order to calculate this one standard deviation or volatility of unexpected loss, I need the variance of the loss given default and the variance of the expected default frequency. So the standard deviation or variance of the expected default frequency is right here and we can calculate that directly from the expected default frequency because default is a Bernoulli it's either default or no and so we can solve for it using the binomial properties of the binomial distribution so right here I've got the standard deviation of the expected default frequency I've implemented this formula here pretty straightforward and I get 3.87 then for the standard deviation of the loss given default right here that's the hardest variable to parameterize arguably so I'm just gonna use an input of 25 percent I'm showing the expected loss although we don't need it for the unexpected loss just for some perspective and you may know that the expected loss is the product of three components the adjusted exposure the probability of default and the loss given default and now the unexpected loss, I'll take this formula out, is going to be right here. And I'll say one more time, using this formula means we're calculating the volatility of the unexpected loss or the one standard deviation dispersion. We would need to multiply, apply a multiplier on it or scale it up to get either an economic capital for internal purposes or a regulatory capital for external purposes. But if I start with the square root term or I'll start with the adjusted exposure the adjusted exposure I'm gonna multiply that by the square root I'm just going with this formula right here of the expected default frequency multiplied by the variance of the loss given default so that's the standard deviation squared and now I'm gonna add now I'm over here the loss given default squared multiplied by the variance of the expected default so that's this quantity squared and then I'm going to close the parens and I get 178,511 and that's my unexpected loss my one standard deviation dispersion uh, my estimate of potential loss in value around the expected loss and you can see it's quite a bit of difference here and it's a function of all of these inputs especially the standard deviation of my expected default frequency and loss given default so I hope this was helpful this is David Harper the Bonic Turtle thanks for your time